Cap, how are you? Morning, John. Good, thanks. How are you doing? It is that time of year, sir, where optimism springs eternal for every club in America that is attached to Major League Soccer because we are this close, unless, of course, you're sporting Kansas City or Portland because of Mother Nature, who is always undefeated. You're one day away from the first match of the year. Do you still, even though you're you're no longer competitive and are active in wins and losses for a franchise, do you still get that, man, we're right there, right there, it's opening day, we're getting that close. Do you still get that that itch and that energy? Uh, a different sort of energy. Uh, I'm excited for the season to start. I'm looking forward to watching the games. It doesn't give me the, quite the uh adrenaline pump as it once did but i am excited for the new season um i'm excited where mls is as a league right now the new apple deal um the the shows um and and all the analysts that they brought in so i'm excited to see how it looks uh day one how much uh deep diving have you gone into in in apple tv plus uh, you know have you subscribed are you in do you have any in have you gone down rabbit holes what what has it been like for you or is it yeah i'll get there on saturday or what has it been like i haven't subscribed yet john Ooh, I, I was holding out hope that somehow i would get one of those free packages from apple <laughs> tv <laughs> but that hope is uh, diminishing very very quickly and uh so tomorrow i'll bite the bullet and get in there but i haven't i haven't gone through and seen any of the stuff i've seen on social media that there's been some cool stuff out there and um, every team's now got their own <clears throat> little channel thing and, and different uh, shows and uh, informations and, and on, on for, former players and things like that. So um, I'm excited to, to check it out a little bit once I get going. When you were when you were an active player in, in Major League Soccer, was it nervous energy? getting ready for for match day one was it all right let's get ahead it was a more matter of fact what was your approach or did it change over time the more experience you had in the league did your energy change heading into match day one um not really i think it's excitement you know you're finally um done with preseason training right i've just kicking each other for you know six weeks and you know matches that don't don't quite mean uh, as much in preseason. So I'm uh, just excited to go out there and compete and play. Um, always the first crowds are loud. They're, they're big. You know, obviously we're lucky in Atlanta that they're always big, but in some other places, you know, you get that beginning of the season pump and um, you know, you're playing in front of big crowds and stuff. So um, no, I think that energy was always there and excitement of, you know, starting, starting new and getting it going. When you when you're in these situations, how did you? And this is a, a question, I guess, for for mentees as well as a mentor. When you're going into a situation for the first time, how do you keep from getting too amped and too over the top and, and just losing your mind before you even kick a ball to where your focus could be drifting and you're not focused on the task at hand? How did you stay focused and locked into the level that you needed to? going into that first day yeah that's that's a tough one and uh yeah because get, getting too amped up isn't isn't great either right you use up energy before the game um and then you then you find out oh man <clears throat> where'd all that energy go once the game yeah. starts um or you know you're, you're running around with chicken like the head cut off in the first 15 minutes of the game and, and you lose your technique and your composure and all those types of things. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that's where experience comes in. Um, that's the difference between being young and, and having some years of experience of, of getting excited, but knowing like, all right, we've got, we've got 30 some odd, 40 some odd of these coming, um, down the chute here. So, um, as excited as I am, I'm going to take it as a, as day one game one and, you know, get, get prepared, but, uh, you know, not shoot everything out of the gate real quick. Did you have to put your arm around some of the younger players as you were more of a veteran and go, cause obviously you'd be seeing those young guys and those young guys are probably just shaking, you know, and they're, 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 they're like walk, they're like walking monster energy drinks, you know, it just, <laughs> you have to sit there and it's like, dude, it's just dial it back. Everything's fine. You don't have to be. You don't have to be like this. You don't have to be. You don't have to be this way. You can dial it back. Save your energy. Did you have to counsel younger guys when you were older? 
A little bit. And I think it's, it's good. It goes both ways. You know, I think that the older guys can help calm um, some nerves and the excitement down for the, the younger guys. But at the same time, you know, some of that energy, um, that youthfulness rubs off on the older guys too. keeps us young, um, keeps us like, you know, remembering what it was like to be young and to be, you know, super excited for the, that, that first game and those first games of the season and stuff, rather than, you know, just, Oh, ho hum, you know, here comes another, you know, eighth season, ninth season, 12th season, whatever it might be. Right. So, um, you know, I think it goes both ways a little bit. Do you remember, I guess, or what do you remember about the first match here in Atlanta for Atlanta United? What were some of the, the memories that came through or that still linger with you from that time at Grant Field when you come outside and you're going, holy bleep, there's a lot of people here. What were some of those memories that, is, that stick with you from the first match in Atlanta? Yeah, I think just <clears throat> um, the sheer noise volume uh, was incredible. Um, to see the stadium packed. Was, and, and, I mean, you, you, we heard beforehand that it was going to be sold out, right? Um, but sometimes – you know, you hear of a game being sold out and then it's not sold out, right? It's yeah. like, you know, some it's a sellout, but somehow there's 5,000 empty seats. Um, <clears throat> but it was a legit sellout. And, you know, I think, you know, that kind of caught me by surprise a little bit. And, and like you said, maybe it was a case of like, you know, okay, here's the start of a new season. And there was a lot of nervous energy before game one because, you know, preseason that first year was a bit of a debacle, right? It's, it's, it was just challenging um, with guys moving and, and relocating. And we were training over at Flowery Branch and things were just really different. Um, and we were really up and down in preseason. So I think it was a little nervous and we didn't play a ton of top teams. Uh, and so it was like, man, we're playing against the Red Bulls. We might get crushed. Um, you know, they, they're perennially... Uh, strongest one of the strongest teams um and so it was all of that but then i think you know the, the the atmosphere just completely uh helped us in in that those early games of like just the energy and the volume uh it's just just incredible when it comes to the younger athletes today do they manage it differently than, say, folks that are, you know, 12 or 15 year vets? Do they understand the context of what's going on maybe easier than the older athletes do as you go from generation to generation? Do they handle it differently? Are they more at ease with all of the noise that's going on around them in these situations? Have you noticed? Uh I don't think so. Um, you know, I think that that also comes with experience of how to play and in front of those atmospheres. And um, and honestly, that's that's one of the things I worry about for MLS Next Pro League, right, of these younger guys. Um, and, and even though the level is going to be, you know, pretty good in this league, uh, I worry that if there's not fans there, that these guys aren't getting the experience of playing in front of a crowd, right, playing in front of – fans and and it's both ways it's it's the pressure of playing in front of your own fans because you don't want to get booed you want to put on a good show right they've got expectations um and, and then the pressure of playing in front of away fans who are just booing you and you know cheering against you and all that type of stuff right so it goes it's both ways right and that's that's something that can't be replicated until you're out there and you feel it uh and, and it's a different type of pressure so, um, you know, I hope that those games are, are valuable for those players, but that, that's, that's a tough one. Um, you know, and it changes things, right. When you, when you're playing at the bends and you can't hear guys, right. How do, how do you communicate, um, you know, and figuring those things out, um, you know, and then if things aren't going well, right. You hit, you feel that pressure, right. Of a home fan booing you or a home fan yelling at you. And you think, you know, that, that, that can affect you in, in certain ways. Uh, so, you know, dealing with all that stuff takes a little bit of uh, experience. <clears throat> when you, when you end uh, from what I have seen, the twos are going to be playing again up at the fraction up at fifth third again in Kennesaw this, this season. So it'll be like it was in USL championship for Atlanta United too. When you're, when you're in those kinds of environments where you have 11 billion people on top of you and you're like, you're at Mercedes Benz. Can you describe 
what it feels like to have that pressure? I mean, is it literally almost like like things pressing down upon you as you're trying <laughs> to function, and almost it, it's almost like the it's coming against you, almost like this physical force? Can you describe what that feeling is like? Is it, um, I was going to say, how, how can you describe what it's like to have that energy, either positive or negative, pushing down on you, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. And that's where I think like mentally guys view it differently, right? You, you, you're playing in front of a big crowd and it's whether it's home or away. Um, and is it a motivating factor of like, Ooh, I God, I can't wait to put on a show today. Or is it, Wow there's a lot of people watching. I hope I don't mess up. Um, You know, I hope, I hope I play well today. Right. Oh, this is a national TV game. I, I gotta play good. There's a lot of people watching scouts watching, you know, whatever. Um, And there's, there's two ways that guys can handle it. And, and, and the way that you look at it can definitely affect things, but that, that pressure is real. And it's, it's, for everyone. And, and I tell this to all my mentees, like I was nervous before most of my games uh, as a pro, right. It's, it's just, yeah, you know, I, cause I care, right. Care about how you play. And, and if you care about how you play, you get a little bit nervous because you want to play well and you want to play up to your expectations and your certain level. Uh, and that's fine. Th- those nerves are fine. Um, and I think that it, sometimes it's a great thing because it gets us to focus and tells our body like, okay, today's a big day. This is a big game. Like I want to play well today. Right if you don't have any of those nerves, sometimes that's when you play down to your opponent, right? You, you just think, Oh, I can cakewalk it today. And um, you know, then, then you're not playing up to your best. And so sometimes those, it's good to have that, that those nerves going into a game. Um, but confidence overcomes those nerves and that little bit of fear once the game starts. Uh, and that's how, you know, like you're in the zone that you're confident and uh, things can go well, right. You know, once the whistle blows, like you're not thinking about the pressure, you're not thinking about the crowd. It's just outside noise. You're just focused on the task. It, it seems like almost like driving a car that has multiple gears to it in a gear shift where you're trying to learn the gas and the clutch about pressure versus energy and trying to make sure that you're shifting the gears the right way and that you're not sitting there and you know popping the clutch every single time that your your energy is at the right level and your nervousness helps you as opposed to overtakes you how long did it take you to to understand that balance and make sure that yeah it's okay it's cool to be nervous but you don't let it overtake you how long did that take Yeah, a little while. You know, I think it it takes time to understand it's okay to be nervous and and how to use that nervous energy, right? How to use it positively, then have it affect you negatively and and ways to combat being nervous before a game, right? Like game days, I did not like to focus on the game at all, right? I, I wasn't, you know, if we had, especially if a night game, right? It was like, you know, let me do some chores in the morning. If it's a home game, you know, I'm at my house, let me... Let me watch some TV, watch a movie, you know, get my mind away from the game. I don't want to think about it at all. Right. Obviously, you're going through your routines of like what you eat and how much you drink and and this and that and moving your body around and whatever. Right. And so, you know, subconsciously you're thinking about the game, but consciously. Right. I'm not focused at the game at all because I don't want to get nervous about it. I don't want to use up all that energy uh, being nervous. And so, you know, I don't focus on the game until you know, heading to the stadium or getting at the stadium and those types of things. And even then, um, you know, having conversations with guys and things like that to keep my mind off of it until the very end. Um, you know, so there's different ways that you can kind of uh, get about things and all that takes a little bit of experience of, of knowing what works for you and, um, you know, going through some trials and tribulations um, because, you know, you, even in the beginning of my career, for sure, it affected me. Um, there's no doubt about it. I hadn't learned you know, how to play in front of big crowds and how to deal with that and the pressure of, you know, making mistakes and guys punishing you for it and, and letting a team down and letting fans down and those types of things. That's it takes time. It, it seems like at the same time, though, and I, and I say this as someone who has covered you and athletes in these situations that you want to try your best to get fully away from it, even though that you can't. I mean, it's it's still got to be there in your mind somewhere. It's like, OK. I've 
got to do this. I have to manage this. I've got to figure out what I'm doing here. If you're still kind of back timing your day, leading yourself up to game prep and the folks around, you know, this too. And it, it, it seems like that really they might, or they might be walking on eggshells too, or they're trying to sit there and steer conversations. It's almost like conscious efforts from your entire environment to make sure that you're still as focused as you can, even though it's still the elephant in the room, it seems. Yeah, the locker room before a game is a unique place because, you know, different things work for different guys, you know, and you've got some guys, you know, pumping themselves up and like early before a game and like, you know, uh, really getting themselves going. You've got other guys at the other spectrum, like, you know, watching TV, um, you know, still in their suit until like the last minute, you know, and, you know, it's just like other guys are on the treatment tables for a while. And it's really interesting to see how guys prepare and what they do. Right. And finding out what works for you Um, because, you know, we're we're all different and different things work for different guys. And and you just got to let guys get how, get prepared, how they got to get prepared. And some of that's like, you don't want to have a conversation about random stuff. If a guy's really trying to focus in, um, you know, or, or vice versa, right? If a guy's, you know, just chilling out, you don't want to be going over there and talking about tactics about certain things, right? So it's finding that balance of when to do that stuff and, ha- ha- you know, and you find guys that are kind of similar to you and that's who you hang out with before games. I, I was going to say, I mean, it's like you know, hmm. you've got the, this entire room of folks. I'm sure that you, in the past, in your locker rooms, you sit there and you look over at somebody and, you know, somebody's like trying to hulk up or something or look like the ultimate warrior. You know, they're trying to run through walls and everything. And you're just like, man, yeah. that, that it's like, dude, just dial it back like 19 notches. Everything will be cool. That and- was me. That was me and Brad Gazan right there. That was me telling <laughs> Brad, would you chill out, dude? Like, <laughs> relax over there, dude. Like- so, I mean, seriously, he's one of those that's like trying to hulk up before matches. Is that yeah, how he's had, he's had 15 coffees? So, you know, he's just, you know, bouncing off walls over there. Um, <laughs> incredible. But he, he's one of those guys that's like, yeah, he can get that way like an hour before the game and consistently just stick with it. And, you know, that's why he's like, yelling all the game right he's um <laughs> he's i don't know he's a different human being um but you know it's so different from me and so um i i used to give him a hard time in, in the locker room like chill out dude like you're just like lob, you're lobbing shots at him while he's sitting there and he's pounding coffee huh yeah and our lockers are right next to each other so ah, was, yeah okay so who who else, uh, hmm. without you know breaking confidences or getting out of school? I mean, you can say I had a teammate who. Who else was dialed up out of their minds that you kind of stared at them and were like, "Man, it's like chill." Decaf would be great for you. Were there other dudes that were really in dire need of decaf or hooked up just entirely too much? Yeah, Leandro was like that too, um, where he was he was animated and and you know, bringing energy into the locker room. And some of that's good, right? Bringing some energy into the locker room, right? Um, Brad's infectious with his energy sometimes. Um, uh, Leandro was like that as well. Um, but we had a bunch of guys on the other, you know, like Darlington, um, Jeff, you know, the, myself, we were definitely on the other spectrum, Um you know, this as far as more low key. And- I, I could I could see Big Red and, and and Darlington and you just kind of looking at everybody else who's on the other side of the spectrum, going, "Man, what is up with that dude?" You know, <laughs> I, I I literally I could see I could see I could see Jeff just maybe look at Brad and just all he'd have to do is like raise an eyebrow or sit there and point and go, "That." <laughs> I just had this, I just had this vision of Jeff that way in the locker room. Am I far off? No, not far off at all. You know, he'd be over there, you know, reading the news or hanging out, you know, in the in the hot tub. We had a crew that would get in the hot tub before the game. And, and you know, that was our area to just chill out and relax. And, um, you know, and this was probably 45, you know, 30 minutes before you go out to warm up. And we're just in there shooting the breeze, um, talking nothing about soccer, you know, just. Seriously. Yeah um just hanging out um you know every now and then we're you know there's tv in there if there's another game on maybe we're watching stuff um 
I mean, you seriously could detach. You got to the point where you, you and you know Darlington and Jeff could detach that much, knowing that yeah, we got to go to work in X amount of period of time. But you guys could seriously put everything. You could lock your brain off that much and sit there and just kind of chill. Yeah. Well, all the preparation was already done. All the all the little conversations about tactics and you know matchups and this and that most of that was already done it was done you know two days before the game the day before the game um you know that type of thing any any last minute stuff was usually like after warm-ups or you know during warm-ups um you know but yeah that that time period where we're in the locker room before going out for warm-ups um a lot of us a few of us it was just chill time relax um you know shoot the breeze until we're you know, a couple minutes before warm up, and then you start to get the energy going. Do do your family and friends know your level of engagement? It's like they know. All right, we can talk to him. We it's okay to talk to him. It's not okay to talk to him. We've got to lay out, let him focus. Did did they still understand when it's okay, when it's not okay to to be engaged with you, knowing that you got a job to do? Yeah, I think that. You know, people think that, you know, especially on a game day, like, oh, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to talk to them and things like that. But for me, it was the opposite. Like, you know, I'd make phone calls on game day, you know, go for walks. Um, I'd like to have conversations and just chill out um, because, again, I I didn't really want to focus that much on the game. Um, So, you know, maybe that's a little bit different. Some guys, you know, want to sleep a lot, um, you know, but. Who, 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 who did anybody do any practical jokes on the sleepers? <laughs> no, although I do remember young. This was young Parky. Young uh, Parky. Uh oh, we've got a young Parky story. I go. We go on road trips and like multiple road trips in a row. The alarm clock at the hotel would be going off at like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. And, you know, when you're at a hotel, like you can't just, you know, you hit the snooze, Mm -hmm. but otherwise you have to turn the light on and figure out how to shut the alarm off. Right. Uh And it wasn't until it happened like three or four trips in a row that we figured out that it was a teammate coming in and setting the alarm to mess with us. And um, it's pretty messed up joke, right? Because you're messing up sleep the night before a game. Why was but, he getting uh, into the room in the first place? Because if you're all as a group, what does he go to? Does he go to the the maids and, and they sit there and say, I need to get into this room. This is my room. I don't have my key. Yeah. Back then we were playing a lot of video games um, when we got to hotels. So there was people, you know, around and in, in, in rooms and stuff. And a lot of times you're leaving the door on the latch. Guys are just coming and going. Um, but yeah, that was, that was messed up thinking about it. <laughs> And what was the revenge? Uh, no, no real revenge, honestly, because you know the guy that did it to, to me was was older. So, ah, uh, okay, you got to be careful with those types of things. You, okay. you just take, take it on the chin sometimes. Well, I was going to say, did you save that information for later and then perhaps extract revenge at a later date when you were more of a veteran, or is it to this day still something that has yet to have an equalizer attached? <laughs> I mean, we we had our fair share of fun back then, um, and there was a lot of different things going on. But um, I, I don't remember because it was an unsuspecting guy, you know, a good dude that would just, you know, ha- had a fun time with it. Um, oh, so so it's someone that you didn't necessarily mm-hmm. anticipate, but had a bit of a, mis- a mischievous streak to him. It's like, man, it's that dude when you figured it out. Correct. Yeah. And which I'm sure guys could think about that for me as well. Um, but you, you like to you like to have fun, um, especially when you're out on the road. All right. F- uh, five minutes left. We I don't want to keep you for uh, added extra time this week. And thanks for hanging out with us, as you always do. Atlanta and San Jose. It's going to be a full house at Mercedes Benz. Seventy thousand expected to uh, to yell their you know what's out for uh, another season for Atlanta United season seven for the 17s. What's going through your mind here with Atlanta United and San Jose? Um, excited about it. Uh, you know, but um, don't know what they're going to do at the number nine. Um, you know, I, I don't think Gigi's playing. Um, Barry? Know, sorry? Probably Barry, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I, I did forget about him momentarily, right? Because Chole's out. Um 
and so yeah yeah i guess good opportunity for barry um you know uh he, he was on and off. I saw him here in Columbus when he, he did pretty good and then had a tough time in D.C. Uh, Everybody so we'll had a tough time in D.C. Yeah, true. It's tough, <laughs> tough to have success there. Um, you know, unless you were playing against Atlanta in 2017. Wow. Um, Lock that out, man. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a good opportunity for a- Atlanta. I mean, San Jose, I don't think, is one of the strongest teams in MLS. They're coming all the way to the East Coast for the first game. That's tough. Um, you know, that said, they've got a couple good pieces in the attack for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, just for me, you got to start out the season with a win, especially coming off the last couple of years where it's been disappointment. Um, I think it's important to have a good, good performance, uh, get the crowd into it, get that atmosphere back at the bends um, that, that that's needed. Uh, and I think it's 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 important to set the tone right from the beginning for the new season. Um, always wanted to come out of the gate strong, have a good performance and uh, just put the league on notice a little bit. Uh, so I'm excited. I've got uh, Arujo in my, my lineup. I think uh, Amada as well, you know, he had a really strong preseason. So I'm excited about him because I think he's candidly been a huge disappointment in my eyes. Um, you know, he's, I, I've seen him play live a couple of times and, his off the ball movement is some of the worst I've ever seen for a winger, especially for someone so talented as he is. So I really hope that, you know, he has a better season this year. Cause honestly, I think skill level, he should be dominating MLS. He should be one of the best in MLS. And so I hope he gets to that level and obviously had a good preseason. So hopefully he's, he's there this year. Uh, Cause uh, Atlanta, Atlanta need him to be. Um, and, and so I'm excited. I mean, you're getting folks back. Brad's back with the in, uh, coming off the injury. We saw him in the preseason. Yeah. Miles is Miles is getting minutes, so your spine is getting reconstructed. Obviously, still waiting on on Ozzy to come back at the six. I uh, don't know how many minutes you'll get from Derek Etienne on the wing, but yeah. there there are some there there is some there are some pieces. R is your plural, John. Uh, you have elements back, and, and last year I believe it was. 20 injuries among 17 players, one of the worst possible seasons. I mean, you ask around, and a lot of folks will sit there and say, last year for injuries, that's as bad as I've ever seen it in Major League Soccer. And you're getting a lot of those guys back to full song coming out of the blocks. And it's a good chance to make that big first step and get full points. Yeah, totally. Um, and, you know, I know that, th- that that's the truth, absolutely, for last year. But there's no excuses um, this year, right? Um, excuses need to stop, right? Atlanta United, spend spend the money. One of the biggest clubs in MLS. And, um, you know, making the playoffs should be the bare minimum goal, right? And so, um, you know, I, I don't think that should be just, you know, goal number one, right? That should be uh, expected every year, like Seattle, of like, you know, hey, no, we're a playoff team. Um, and, and we've got aspirations to win trophies. And so Atlanta, you need to get back to that. And so, yeah, you know, Etienne coming back, Miles coming back, right? Brad, um, you know, striker position still in flux, even with all that, um, still need to come out of the gate strong um, and, and get a victory tomorrow. And I think they will. What's the latest with Beyond Goals? What you and Greg are up to? Uh, still cruising along. Still talking to uh, some high schools. Um, doing the individuals. Uh, it's been we've been busy. Um, we've had a lot of individuals, uh, you know, reaching out as the season starts starts up again, um, and, and the tournaments come rolling around. So um, staying busy and and still cruising along with the nonprofit, trying to get that up and running. When do we get to see you down here at a home match? Uh, good question. There was talks about me coming down for this weekend and it didn't, didn't happen. Uh, so I'm not sure yet. Don't have a ticket booked yet, but, um, never, never far away. So, uh, I'd like to get down to one, the first quarter of the season for sure. So, um, need to find one that works best. No doubt. Well, and and you know that everybody will roll out the five stripe carpet for you when you do come down at MF Parkhurst on the Twitters at BG mentoring beyond goals, mentoring the Friday free kick. Friday free kick. Man, if I could get my upper plate to work, we'd be doing all right this morning. Cap, it's always great to see you. And uh, season begins and optimism begins anew with another year of Major League Soccer. Thanks for hanging out. Yes, enjoy the kickoff 2023, baby. Yes. There you go. See, now I'm ready. I'm ready to run through a wall. Be good, Cap.